benefits. This will show you where the ships are operating and can lead to uh, where to direct the resources for the more expensive surveys. <laughs> Unmanned air surface and undersea vehicles will enable collecting new data sets in the Arctic. In particular, the undersea vehicles can collect data under the ice canopy and produce silent sonar and synthetic aperture sonar images. Geolocation challenges for the vehicle position uncertainty exist and we need to resolve them. NASA and NOAA are already collecting uh, data sets in this area. That's the background on the geospatial issue. Now, people present some of the original technologies. Okay, so let's look at a couple of programs that are coming out, in this case, DARPA, to address the Arctic in particular. Not that we're here to promote DARPA programs per se, but they are ahead of the curve on this. And on the left, we have the, the Assured Arctic uh, Awareness Program, and we see the websites below, which is basically attempting to do what we've been describing here. Situational awareness for the Arctic, developing new sensor capabilities uh, for year-round coverage. On the right is the Hydro Program, which isn't focused on the Arctic per se, but its capabilities really have uh, implications for the Arctic. So let's look at this, this very challenging acquisition environment. We've, we've relied on sonar for decades, and it's very reliable with side scan sonar and new technologies, but it's slow and costly. In recent years, EO capabilities have presented themselves for doing the collection in the littoral regions, which are much more cost effective, but they're limited to, to littoral. So the story is integration across all these domains. Let's look at hyperspectral in particular. Barry talked about LIDAR bathymetry. Hyperspectral, which has been pursued now for the last 10 years, uh, isn't new in, uh, it isn't new technology, but for the maritime domain, it is. Because it allows one to map the uh, water column itself, which is a very challenging environment. So the way this works is you start with a pixel in this image, get its spectra, compare it against a database of synthesized spectra, do some kind of, of a match filter process to come up with the best match, and voila, you've got what's going on in that water column. However, it's very uh, closely tied to that equation, and so any, any part of that model that is done appropriately, and this can lead to uh, false positives. The good news is, this hyperspectral capability is now in high code, the hyperspectral imaging capability for, uh, which is now housed on the International Space Station. So we're going to end with what we started. The graphic on the left is where we are today with the Arctic, basically out of date on it with charts. Where we need to go is what you see there on the right, the technologies that John talked about. So perhaps the motivation hasn't been there in years past for the Arctic, but the Arctic is melting before our eyes. It's going to become way more accessible in the years ahead. We need to be ahead of the curve on this from a commercial, environmental, strategic uh, defense uh, perspective. And uh, I'll end on that. My name is Pete Doucette. This is John Lambert. We'd love to talk to you about ideas you may have. Thank you.